it's never going to be a butterfly. It's quite interesting, this hornball theoretically or possibly should just swallow the whole thing. But sometimes you get different ways that, that caterpillars or different insects as well try and avoid being eaten. Some of them have got spikes or spines on them, those sort of hairy protrusions. We saw that a while back with the hornbill as well. And it was dragging it through the sand to get rid of those irritational hairs on it. So that caterpillar may be secreting something. Maybe it's got something in the feces or some kind of chemical that makes it taste bad. That's maybe why the hornbill is just, you can see, just moving it around and getting the ends into the sand. Good coordination though, look at how it's neatly just moving its beak from one side to the other of the caterpillar. There's another one coming in, this could get interesting. That's a bit of a bigger one. <laughs> Listen, I'm quite curious why it's taking so long for it to eat it the only likely options. Caterpillars don't actually have any bones or anything inside so it's not like it needs to soften it up first. Maybe just building up the courage to eat that. That would be the equivalent of, of a very very large one-piece meal for us. You can see it's about the size of the or the length of the hornbull's body or the, the main part of the body of the hornbull. Quite a large bird. Also get the red crested coron in this area, which are obviously very similar, but slightly smaller, slightly different colours on them. These guys are insect eaters. You can see that from the beak. Nice sharp beak. Good to grab and catch insects with. They'll eat mantids and grasshoppers, butterflies, moths, even small. And move on but just before we do <laughs> like a lot of actually it might be lesser gray shrike looks like a red back but sometimes get the lesser gray shrike here as well love it to turn just slightly it looks like there's a bit of red on the shoulder there Now they get the name from the males actually. Males are similar in color, but they get these big sort of knob protrusions on the on the top of the bull. Hence knob bull duck. Called a golden breasted bunting. Again, we haven't seen them too often. They're a little bit shy as well, but beautiful. Look at that facial markings. And then the kingfisher as well. This is our very common summer visitors, the woodland kingfisher. Sort of roughly what they sound like. I still can't mimic their call perfectly. 
Let's come have a look at that little bunting again, please, just to the left. It's just flown back onto this. Look at that. Quite a small bird, about sparrow size. And as the name suggests, golden breasted bunting. It's got that beautiful orange gold breast and chest. And then all your buntings, the other species as well, have got that black and white striped head, which is the easy characteristics of, of this. And the other one that we sometimes see, not, not right here, but if you go a bit south, you get the rock bunting as well. Quite almost funny to watch it sometimes. Those long toes are designed so that this animal can easily walk on sort of this kind of stuff that it's walking on now lilies and sort of watertight plants running around there looking for insects and little fish all kinds of bits and pieces to eat yeah oh, it's gorgeous reflection there of the sedge grass things you can make out there is the darker beak also that sort of white brow running along the top of the head it's a happy grey hornbill at the moment it's got a big caterpillar there it's got a pretty good meal for the start of the day